Good day everyone, welcome to Physical Education and Health, or Health Optimizing Physical Education 1. Our topic for today is about aerobic exercises. Our objectives for today is to identify what is aerobic exercise, appreciate and value the importance of aerobic exercise, and perform a sample of an aerobic exercise. The term aerobic actually means with oxygen, which means that breathing controls the amount of oxygen that can make it to the muscles to help them burn fuel and move. Aerobic exercise is any physical activity that makes you sweat, causes you to breathe harder, and gets your heart beating faster compared to when you are at rest. Doing aerobic exercises regularly strengthens your heart and lungs and trains your cardiovascular system to manage and deliver oxygen more quickly and efficiently throughout your body. Aerobic exercise uses your large muscle groups, is rhythmic in nature, and can be maintained continuously for at least 10 minutes. Here are some benefits of aerobic exercise. Improves cardiovascular conditioning, decreases risk of heart disease, lowers blood pressure, increases HDL or good cholesterol, helps to better control blood pressure, assists in weight management and or weight loss, improves lung function, and decreases resting heart rate. It is recommended that you talk with your physicians before you start an exercise program. Ask what, if any, limitations you may have. People who suffer from diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, arthritis, pulmonary conditions, or other health conditions may need additional safety guidelines for exercise. If you develop symptoms during exercise including, but not limited to, Unusual shortness of breath, tightness in the chest, chest, shoulder, or jaw pain, lightheadedness, dizziness, confusion, or joint pain, you should stop exercising immediately and contact your physician. What are some examples of aerobic exercises? Some examples of aerobic exercises are lower impact aerobic exercises and higher impact aerobic exercises. Some examples of lower impact aerobic exercises include swimming, cycling, using an elliptical trainer, walking, rowing, and using an upper body ergometer. Higher impact aerobic exercises include running, jumping rope, performing high-impact routines or step aerobics. Warming up and cooling down. Every session of aerobic exercise should include a warm-up and cool-down. The warm-up period should not include static stretching, but should instead be a gradual increase in pace and intensity of the exercise. This allows the body to increase blood flow to the muscles and decreases the likelihood of a muscle or joint injury. The warm-up should last between 5 and 10 minutes. The cool-down session should last a similar amount of time as the warm-up, with the pace gradually decreasing. Stretching exercises would be appropriate after aerobic exercise. How often and for how long should I do these exercises? The American Heart Association recommends that everyone reach a minimum of 30 minutes of some form of cardiovascular exercise 5 to 7 days per week. This can be broken up into 10 minute time periods. This means that taking 3 walks of 10 minutes each would let you reach the recommended minimum guidelines for reducing risk of heart disease, diabetes, hypertension, and high cholesterol. You would also burn the same number of calories as you would if you walk for the full 30 minutes at one time. It is appropriate to do aerobic exercise every day. 
there is no need to rest in between sessions unless you are at an extreme level of training, such as preparing for a marathon, or if you experience recurring joint pain. If joint pain is a limiting factor, it would be appropriate to alternate less painful exercises with those that may cause joint pain or discontinue the painful exercise altogether. Heart rate and exercise. Your heart rate increases in direct correlation with the intensity of the exercise. Heart rate levels can vary significantly from one person to another based on fitness level, genetics, environment, and exercise tolerance. If you wish to train based on heart rate, contact your healthcare provider to determine what is the appropriate range for you. Some medications, most often blood pressure drugs, control heart rate, making it impossible to determine exercise intensity in this way. Ask your physician to determine if you are on any of these medications. Progression to higher intensities of exercise should be based on individual exercise tolerance. There are three methods for challenging aerobic fitness. Increase speed, increase the resistance, and increase the duration. The intensity is determined by how hard you are working. The intensity of the exercise is determined by what your goals are, what limitations you have, and your current fitness level. Here are some principles of exercise that can be used as guide to your fitness plan. A successful exercise program incorporates a number of general principles in order to make the training safe and effective, helping us to achieve our goals. The first principle is principle of individual differences. The principle of individual differences simply means that because we are all unique individuals, we will all have a slightly different response to an exercise program. This is another way of saying that one size does not fit all when it comes to exercise. Well-designed exercise programs should be based on our individual differences and responses to exercise. Some of these differences have to do with body size and shape, genetics, past experience, chronic conditions, injuries, and even gender. For example, women generally need more recovery time than men. The older athletes generally need more recovery time than younger athletes. The next principle is the principle of specificity. We've all heard the phrase, practice makes perfect. Well, this is the principle of specificity in action. This principle simply states that exercising a certain body part or components of the body primarily develops that part. The principle of specificity implies that to become better at the particular exercise or skill, you must perform that exercise or skill. A runner should train by running, a swimmer by swimming, and a cyclist by cycling. While it is helpful to have a good base of fitness and to do general conditioning routines, if you have to be better at your sports, you need to train specifically for that sport. The next principle is the principle of overload. The exercise science principle of overload states that a greater than normal stress or load on the body is required for training adaptation to take place. What this means is that in order to improve our fitness, strength or endurance, we need to increase the workload accordingly. In order for a muscle to increase strength, it must be gradually stressed by working against a load greater than it is accustomed to. For adaptation to occur, the volume of exercise must overload the body in some way in line with the capacity of the individual to cope with that overload. Another principle is the principle of progression. The principle of progression implies that there is an optimal level of overload that should be achieved. 
and an optimal time frame for this overload to occur. A gradual and systematic increase in the workload over a period of time will result in improvements in fitness without risk of injury. If overload occurs too slowly, improvement is unlikely, but overload that is increased too rapidly may result in injury or muscle damage. For example, the weekend athlete who exercises vigorously only on weekends violates the principles of progression and most likely will not see obvious fitness gains. The principle of progression also stresses the need for proper rest and recovery. Continual stress on the body and constant overload will result in exhaustion and injury. You should not train hard all the time, as you risk overtraining and a decrease in fitness. Another principle is the principle of adaptation. Adaptation refers to the body's ability to adjust to increased or decreased physical demands. It is also one way we learn to coordinate muscle movement and develop sport-specific skills such as batting, swimming freestyle, or shooting free throws. Repeatedly practicing a skill or activity makes it second nature and easier to perform. Adaptation explains why beginning exercisers are often sore after starting a new routine, but after doing the same exercise for weeks and months, they have little, if any, muscle soreness. Additionally, it makes an athlete very efficient and allows him to expend less energy doing the same movements. This enforces the need to vary a workout routine if you want to see continued improvement. The last principle is the fit principle. The frequency, intensity, time, and type. Frequency, how often you exercise. Intensity, how hard you exercise. Time, how long you exercise. And type, what kind of exercise. The FIT principle is one of the foundations of exercise, a set of guidelines that help you set a workout routine for maximum benefit. And now, for our evaluation, students will perform the higher impact aerobic exercise, which includes running, jumping rope, performing high-impact routines or step aerobics. And that will be all. Thank you everyone for listening. Hope that you have learned something from this topic. Have a good day.